yeah, we can listen question that is defending. But once Song gets it, someone's got to get tired because we know his quality. And Johnson just drifts in at the back like all good wide players do. But the delivery, absolutely fantastic. Almost impossible to defend once it leaves his foot. In the second half, Tim, and what a start. Four minutes in with the equaliser, perfect. It really was, but I think they're always going to be a threat. I mean, never, never get their head down, Tottenham. And no matter how the game's going, I just always feel like they're going to score goals. We've got so many attacking players, and, and Son does brilliantly here, and the delivery's fantastic. And just drifts on the blind side of Dinia. He doesn't even see him. You see him here. He's got Pedro Porro. So all he's worried about here, and he's, he's, he's just focused on him. He hasn't even seen Johnson behind him. He's continually looking at Porro there. You see his body shape's all wrong. Sonny's doing his work on the other side of the pitch. He just sneaks in behind him. Not once has he seen him. He sees him at the wrong time when he's celebrating. That's when he sees him. That's the first time. And then he throws his arms up and down and tries to blame someone else. So um, it's really good for, for Johnson. I, I admire him. You know, he took a lot of stick, especially from a lot of Tottenham fans as well online. Um, and he's just dug in, he's come off line, he's, he's, he's rolled his sleeves up, he's worked hard in training and he's got his rewards on the pitch. He's a prolific goal scorer for Tottenham now, yeah, he's a real goal threat. Seven in 11 for Brennan Johnson. Interesting managerial tweak then, we saw Son get the assist, Ange Postacoglu then took Son off and then they scored three. We weren't too happy about it at the time, Graham, was he? You no, have to make these big calls, you managers, I right, guess. Exactly, yeah. And it's, it's, it's fine when you, when you win the game in the end, yeah. then you're a genius. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's, that's the deal with it. He's not happy. You, you wouldn't want him to be happy either, to be fair. Mm. But um, yeah, that's a frustrated player. But in the end, he'll be happy that the team's won, I'm pretty sure, because Tim, Tim will know he's a top player, top, top person, ultimately wants the team to do well. Yeah. And um, they didn't miss him, really, because they just went from strength to strength, didn't they? No, you could argue they probably got a little bit better when they went off. Um, but I, th I thought Solanke was, was brilliant, really top-class centre-forward performance. Never stops running, never stops working. Great little bit of move, great pass from Kulisevsky as well on the finishes. It, it's brilliant. As you see, this is something he did all game, Solanke. He, he was up and down, working hard for his team, starting the press. And then he doesn't stop moving, as I say, when, it, when he's hungry for a goal. It's... And we'll talk more about Dominic Solanke and look at his goals in just a second. But Spurs got themselves going in that, that second half with a goal from Brennan Johnson. It's 7-11 and 11 from him. But was it all about the ball from Son? Absolutely. A brilliant reaction from Spurs and it needed to score only in the second half. And the delivery is just absolutely fantastic. Yeah, we can get some question that is defending. But once Son gets it, someone's got to get tired because we know his quality. And Johnson just drifts in at the back like all good wide players do. But the delivery, absolutely fantastic. Almost impossible to defend once it leaves his foot. Brilliant goal. And Spurs, great reaction from Spurs after seeing this. Played some beautiful football. And knowing what he can do, brave decision from Ange Postacoglu to, to take him off. He wasn't happy about it, Son. But then there were three more goals in, in Tottenham's locker. Equalising goal obviously came from a great assist by your skipper, Son. Who is your captain? Is your standard bearer? You then decide to take him off, which worked for you. I mean, is it fair to say that maybe is a brave decision? I mean, obviously it was the right one. No, not really. Um, he was never going to play more than 55 minutes today uh, at a stretch. Um, he came back from an injury and, you know, last time, sort of around the 60-minute mark, he, he got injured again, so we were never going to play him more than that. But super pleased he contributed before that. Uh, and... Um, Great thing is he's got through unscathed and, you know, we'll be better for it. Been a good week, hasn't it, with that City win, obviously, in the, in the week. And then to follow it up today is, is a really good week. Seven days is a long time in football, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Seven days ago, I was, uh, I was a grumpy old so-and-so. So, -and -so. so um, you know, a disappointing, real disappointing game for us at Palace. But with two big tasks of City and, and Villa to come... Um, we made sure by Monday when we got back in the building that, you know, we were going to feel sorry for ourselves and we're going to get back to being the team we want to be. He talked first half and then they went through the gears in the second half but what really changed for you well the first thing was a little tactical switch that gave them uh, more width especially down the left hand side I think the other thing was a better a better decision making and quality in the final third especially after the transitions there was they were a bit predictable in the first half um, we can see here Villa nice and compact Udogi left left back inside the left winger Son. We see this with Tottenham a lot. Both fullbacks like to play narrow. That allows McGinn to go and help Cash and double up on Son. And what it did is it, it kind of made Son's mind up not to go down the left-hand side because he knew he had two to beat. And he kept coming back inside, making Spurs more predictable. 
and really too narrow. And they didn't really trouble Martinez, to be honest with you, in the first half. And Villa were comfortable. Again, we see a doggy in this position. Not really dangerous there. Gives the ball out wide. McGinn, again, is the first one to go. And press Son. And there's Cash, ready to jump, ready to cover him if he wants to go down the outside. Again, what we see, nice and predictable. Inside, easier to defend against. And then pot shots from nowhere, really. Really, really simple for Villa to defend against. This was something Tottenham were really good at, the transition. This is the quality in the final third we're talking about. Nothing too cute, nothing too clever. Again, snuffed out by good defending. Now look at the doggy's position in the second half. Good old traditional overlaps. Full backs getting past their wide men, causing the, the full back and the wide midfielder a problem. You can see McGinn pointing to Cash. Look, a doggy's going. You've got to go with the run. And what Cash does, the right thing, he drops off, waiting for the run, gives Son a yard, and what a pass this is. But that's the type of thing that can happen when you get full backs helping their wide men and getting some 2v1s. Again, we see exactly the same thing. This must have been something the manager spoke about half time. Because it doesn't just happen. You know, they play inside a lot. Again, this time it's an honour and Cash. Uses his pace to cause Cash a problem. 1v1. Picks out Solanke. It's a good save from Martinez. Got you some water if Thank you, you need it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's aeroplanes for you. <laughs> no, no. The, 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 just, there are various stats with Tottenham that I think are really quite interesting at the moment, Phil. I'm going to show you this one, which is just the first, the difference between the first half and the second half for them at home this season. And, and when you look at the numbers and the stats and how things change for them, that you give manage, managers credit for those kind of things, don't you? Absolutely. I think you know we sit here often and and praise the players a lot, but I think sometimes the managers deserve praise. And I think today, especially and as well this season, that Ange Postecoglou has done a terrific job. Um, he made some decisions and, and substitutions today um, that benefited the team, um, and, and ultimately they got the result they wanted in the end. The, the other thing that we noticed, and we both looked at this stat and went, "Wow!" Um, I'm not going to use the word that sometimes <laughs> people use about Spurs, but this this would dispel that word by a mile because look at the resilience they are showing at home in this calendar year. Yeah, I think before seeing that stat, I don't think you would associate that stat with, with, with Tottenham, but you know, you can see from losing positions, 24 points is, is, is huge, and especially with the likes of above City there as well. So um, it's, a big, um, it's a big point for them, um, a big uh, stepping stone for them to, to, to build on as well. He had a slow start, but I'm pleased for him today. Well, he did have a little injury, to be fair. Yeah. If there was any critics, that, that certainly put them to bed. You know, there was a moment today as well, as I think after the first goal, but maybe even after the second, you know, the whole stadium singing his name yeah. and stuff. Yeah. There's a moment today where I think the fans kind of, took them took yeah. him to the hearts and actually realized how good what how good he is and what a player they've got